Hey guys, uh, this is gonna be part two of my bad book review and also uh, just a quick recap of New York Comic Con 2011. So I'm gonna start off with uh, the review of Batman number one by Scott Snyder. As I already stated before, mine signed right there. So uh, this book starts off in, I believe, it starts off in present day Bat Universe. Uh, starts off with Batman in Arkham, surrounded by his rogue gallery. Um, and he, he, he Batmans them into the ground. Um, there's a team up later on in the battle, the fight scene. I'm not gonna spoil anything of a, who he teams up with. It's surprising. Um, after that, you fast forward a little bit to um, Batman. Um, he's back in the Batcave. Um, you see Dick Grayson, you see Tim Drake, and you see uh, Alfred and Damian Wayne. They're all together. They're going to a fundraiser because Bruce Wayne has decided that he's going to revitalize Gotham, Gotham by destroying all the, the rundown parts like Crime Alley and um, all those other places um, and build new buildings to help you know change Gotham's uh, image. Uh, there's a lot, another, um, some characters introduced. Um, there's another philanthropist that's a billionaire dude, very similar to Bruce Wayne. And um, the book continues on. Um, Batman's summoned by the signal thing. Um, he goes to a crime scene, and there's a guy nailed to a wall. Um, and then there's a DNA test about um, the guy struggled. They they find DNA of the, the assailant, and um, they match the DNA to someone very important. I'm not going to spoil anything um, too major. This is actually um, an interesting book. Um, so the creative team between this book is Scott Snyder and... Greg Capullo and Jonathan Galapion. Scott Snyder, the writer, he writes a lot of different books. He wrote a lot of books. He writes um, American Vampire, um, Scalped. Uh, no, does he do Scalped? No, he doesn't do Scalped. Uh, either Scalped or Severed. Something about other monsters, other killing things. Um, he also currently he's also writing Swamp Thing, and I, that's it, I believe. He also did the last arc of Detective Comics, uh, Black Mirror, which is really good. Uh, probably one of my favorite arcs in Batman is what got me back into Batman. Um, so his writing is extremely well done. Um, Scott Snyder is a very good oh crap uh, a very good writer. Um, he knows what he's doing. He knows how to write Batman. Like he knows how to write a mystery. And this Batman is very smart. He, you know, he's using technology in his. Like, this is the one thing that differentiates uh, this from Detective Comics. This is also, you know, sleuthy type stuff and also dark, but Batman's using a lot of gadgets. He's using this facial recognition, recognition system. Um, there's this other, Dick, uh, Dick Grayson uses another mask type thing that allows him to, um, that's very fancy. It's just, it's really cool. Um, it's what I like a lot. Um, like, Batman's supposed to be about these gadgets and stuff, and the fact that Scott Snyder is involving them. And this just ups the ante a little bit with all the other Batman books. Um, uh, what else about it? Scott Snyder? Yeah, Scott Snyder knows how to write um, Batman. His Bruce is very different from the way he wrote Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson's very lighthearted. His Bruce is very serious. His Batman's very serious. Um, so the artwork um, is by Greg Capullo and Jonathan Galapion, um, with I believe. Pencils and inks by Greg Capullo and art and colors by Galapion. Uh, Capullo, he's known for Spawn. Uh, he's been on Spawn for a very long time. I think this is his first time moving away from Spawn and onto a more mainstream book like Batman. And I have to say, this his artwork is amazing. I like it a lot. It is very good. Um, his Batman is very strong, sleek, and powerful. Um, the way he draws Batman's new costume is extremely well done. Uh, I can't, I can't, there's nothing else to say about it, um, um, and the way he draws Batman, um, and differentiates between all the Bat family, um, Dick, Tim, Damien, and Bruce is amazing, um, yes, his Batman's very, it, his style reminds me of, uh, Bruce Tim's anime series, um, square jaw, broad shoulders, extremely, like, you know, masculine looking, very powerful superhero image, um, he also, yeah, he draws Batman. His Batman is just amazing. Um, one weird thing about his art that 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 confused me is um, Bruce 
um, the height differences between all of them. I know Bruce is an adult and he's very tall. He's supposed to be tall. He's very strong. It's well known that he's taller than uh, Dick Grayson, who's returned to being Nightwing. But Capullo draws Dick very sh a lot shorter than Bruce, like really shorter, like probably like a foot shorter, which is interesting. Um, th that I found weird. Um, and he differentiates between Tim and um, you know, Dick is taller than Tim, and they're both taller than Damien, who's a child. But those guys are all very thin. Um, like, you know, it reflects in their, their fighting style and, like, the, the type of heroes they are that, you know, they're very thin. They're not based on power. Like, for example, Dick is more acrobatic um, and Tim is more detective-y. Uh, you know, his, his forte isn't, like, not saying that he's weak, but his forte is more detective than fighter um but then but he can't hold his own in a fight um if you read other books and damien's damien he they don't really have a major two major role they don't really do i hope snyder um and uh, capullo involve um these guys in the book um i would love to see his take on the new red robin suit the new um and the new nightwing costume as well as damien's of uh, robin costume i don't really care about damien but this book is extremely well done um there's not too many complaints I have about it. Um, I find some of the colors to be too, a little too dull, especially in the beginning of the book. I understand it's supposed to be dark. I like the, um, yeah, but um, while they were in Gotham um, or Arkham, uh, some of the artwork was very, um, some of the colors were very dull, which made it interesting, but at the same time, I felt took away a little bit from the book. Um, like with some of the, the rogues, they were dull, which which was a very interesting take on them just because they are in Arkham and that you know they don't have their costumes or make they have makeshift costumes that you know they had to like make and deal with um it's a phone anyway um otherwise this book is very good um artwork wise story wise I think it's um a great collaboration for Capullo to get into the mainstream um, bat books and just to get uh, into DC like I, I'd love to see him do other work maybe on Superman and maybe on um, some um, maybe a flash I mean flash currently has a great artist but I would love to see uh, Capullo's like uh, um, like um, version of, uh, of the other heroes um, it looks very it looks his Batman's great um, so uh, what I don't really have much to say about anything else about this book. Um, my rating for it's going to be a 5 out of 5. It's a great book for an introduction into Batman. This is probably the best book of the 52 wave, in my opinion. Um, the, other only, the other only book that I believe matches up to this, in my opinion, is Flash number 1. I have that signed by Francis Monopole and uh, Brian uh, Busello, I think his name is, um, the other writer. Um, he, um, I might review it, I'm not sure yet, that's the only issue I plan on buying, um, but I think Flash is the only book that, um, can compare to this. So that's with my review of the Bat books, um, I'm gonna be reviewing the next uh, issues, um, Batman number two comes out next week, or this coming Wednesday, and, uh, I'm gonna be reviewing all, the, all three number twos again this week. And that's the way I'm going to be doing uh, my Batman reviews every three weeks or so. Um, I'm also going to, on a side note, um, at Fear Itself ends this week. So I'll be doing a, a Fear Itself review one of issues 1 through 7. And maybe I'll do the, the epilogue and the fallout from Fear Itself. Um, and Amazing Spider-Man is ending soon. So I might, I'm probably going to also do an Amazing Spider-Man like um, a Spider Island arc, or maybe I'll just start at the beginning of Big Time for people who don't read Amazing Spider Man and I want, I mean, interested in getting into Spider Man, and Big Time is an, a great place to jump on. So, uh, as I said, um, so anyway, 5 out of 5. So, this past weekend was um, New York Comic Con, I'm not going to spend too long on it, but um, it was great. I had a great time. Uh, I went three days, uh, it was four this year. I went Friday through Sunday. It, last it started Thursday last Thursday and um it was great uh I saw a lot of things um organization was a lot better than last year's um that two queue lines for people who had tickets for people who had to pick up um 
it's crowded as always. Um, like there's tons of free stuff, tons of panels, tons of signings that I managed to get to that I didn't manage to do last year. Um, I missed a lot of signings because of like things like that. Um, like cause clashing is just signings clash because of DC and Marvel. But I managed to get. I'm satisfied with what I managed to get. Uh, I'll be showing off some of the stuff I get signed while I'm doing comic reviews. And if you're Facebook friends with me, um, I have a bunch of pictures uploaded of the stuff I have. I still have to update my pictures too. But anyway, uh, yeah, there are a lot of panels. Uh, Marvel announced a lot. DC announced DC. Um, Limps off with DC. I don't know. I didn't really follow DC too much during the convention, but. To my knowledge, they announced that they're uh, they're mixing up some of the, the reboot teams on the books. Uh, what I do know is that re um, Static and Superman, off the top of my head, are getting reboot um, not rebooted, but the, the the creative teams are getting mixed up, both writer and artists, I believe. Which I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, I mean, I do that only after the book starts dropping in sales or interest, but that's just me. I mean, this may be just because the writers have like issues that they have to deal with, and I understand that. People, these guys are humans; they have their own lives, they have their own families. You know, if they don't have the time or effort to put into writing, okay, that's not their fault. They, you know, it's a big of them to be able to step off the book at a certain point and let someone else take over the reins. Um. Off the top of my head, I can't really remember any other DC um, info. Um, oh, um, the, the Arkham City comes out this weekend, um, this week, Tuesday, I believe, in two days. Or right now, it's Monday morning, 2 a.m. Uh, so it comes out tomorrow. I'll be picking up Arkham City. I'm buying a special edition. I'll probably be doing an unboxing Tuesday night of it. And um, other than that, uh, Nightwing's playable. The DLC is released. Um, there's a list of DLC and stuff. Um, Green Lantern cartoon series, which people are excited about. Um, that's actually very interesting. I'm probably interested in that too. Um, I don't like three CGI too much, but it looks interesting, so I'll deal with that. And um, I think they had a Dark Knight panel. I don't remember. I, yeah, whatever. Dark Knight. Um, Marvel's the guys who stepped things up this year. They had a lot. They had the Avengers panels. Number one thing, busiest thing. They showed some footage. Chris Evans, Tom Hiddleston, Colby Smothers, and Greg. Uh, Greg. Greg, I forgot his name, um, Colbert or something like that, whoever plays Agent Coulson, he was there, um, it was good, um, they showed new footage, they did signings, it was awesome, um, I didn't get to see the footage because the, the theater was packed, it's probably online somewhere already, I'll glimpse at it maybe, um, TV wise, they had a non-announcement, also in Spider-Man cartoon, <coughs> gonna be on probably Disney XD 10, um, 2012, um, Season 2 of Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Um, and they showed some footage of that. I don't want to spoil the footage. I watched some of it. Uh, what other TV shows? Oh, live action TV shows. Uh, in progress. They're trying to get done. Hulk, produced by Guillermo del Toro. Very, super interested in that. Um, Cloak and Dagger. Possibility. Um, I don't really care about Cloak and Dagger, but if it's a good show, it's a good, it'll be good. Um, um, they're gonna do a Mockingbird series. Mockingbird's a um, wife of Hawkeye. Interested in that? If they get Jeremy, Jeremy Renner to reprise his role as Hawkeye in the show, that'd be cool. And um, a show based on uh, Jessica Jones, who is currently the wife of Luke Cage. Um, so you know this show, live action detective show, start, and they've confirmed that if it goes through, that um, Luke Cage and Miss Marvel will appear. So, like, this is a great chance for cameos to appear. Daredevil could show up, Spider-Man, Iron Fist, Doctor Strange, all the New York base. Fantastic, a new set of Fantastic Four. Um, they even have the Avengers in it. I mean, it's a great chance for Marvel to break out into the TV live-action-wise and animated-wise. Um, comic news for them, which I'm, I'm pretty much more interested in Marvel than I am in DC. Comic news, uh, this video is running long. Let me get through this real quick. Comic news, uh, Cable's coming back, um, he died, uh, for those who don't know, in Second Coming, he's back, he's gonna fight the Avengers, I'm interested, uh, that's okay, um, the biggest news that I found important, um, Return of the Scarlet Spider, probably not Ben Riley, but Return of the Scarlet Spider, it's gonna be interesting, um, any other crazy stuff, 
Oh, also, Phoenix. Um, Marvel T something, one sentence, like two, three weeks before Comic Con, it's coming. Uh, apparently, at the panel, uh, what they showed, Joe Quesada showed, was BAM, Phoenix symbol. So either Jean Grey's coming back, or somehow Phoenix is going to be uh, brought back in, with Hope Summers. Um, I don't really care for Jean Grey or Hope, but you know, crazy, interesting stuff. Uh, the X-Men split up, Wolverine and Cyclops have their own factions, which is also interesting. Schism happened like uh, last week. Wolverine's starting up the, the school again in Westchester, and Cyclops is doing his own thing in California. Um, you know, things are crazy things are happening in the Marvel Universe, and I'm excited. Um, Otherwise, that's off the top of my head. Comic Con was really great. Um, I hope next year is just as good. Um, I'm probably going to go four days next year. Hopefully, I'll be able to get more friends to come. I went in with a couple of people. It was fun. We had a lot of fun. We got a lot of free stuff. And we had a great time. Um, otherwise, yeah. Um, I hope you guys, if you guys went to Comic Con, um, let me know how your experiences was. Saw a lot of great costumes. Saw a lot of bad costumes. But, you know, that happens. Um, so, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, leave a comment. You know, video review, response, whatever you want. Um, I'm always, I always want to hear you guys' opinions. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys later.